What is up designers, welcome to my Photoshop tutorial and today we're learning how to change skin color in Photoshop. So as you can see I have a normal photograph of a girl dressed up but her skin is uh, the natural color. So what we want to do is add a layer that's going to paint her skin only and that's going to change the skin in a natural way. So here we go, this is how it's done. Uh, the way I do it is I go to the adjustment layers and I add the solid color here. So once I go there, you can just simply select whatever color you want the skin to be. We're going to select uh, roughly uh, select light blue, cyan. And once I press OK, then I'm going to switch the blending mode of the layer to color. And once I do that, the whole image will be pretty much blue. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to click the white rectangle here, which is the layer mask. And I'm going to make sure that my foreground color is black. And a quick way to swap between the colors here, by the way, is X on your keyboard. Once you do that, press Alt or Option Backspace. That is basically a shortcut to fill your whole layer with the foreground color you have. So once we do that, the whole color will disappear. It's basically hidden. So now we can just simply make it appear in the certain areas that we want. So instead of the black, I'm going to select my white color here and I'm going to select my brush tool B for shortcut and I'm going to zoom in and start to color her arms. So notice that I zoomed in pretty quickly. By the way, I wanted to mention this that uh, whenever I watch YouTube tutorials on Photoshop, usually people zoom in uh, in some strange ways, like using the zoom tool or their mouse wheel or something like that. But I find the easiest way to zoom in and out without moving your hands at all is press down control or command and space and then left click on your mouse and move the mouse left or right. So left basically moves the camera out or zooms out and if you move the mouse to the right it just zooms in. So I find this really helpful because I never have to move my hands. So I always have my hands in the same place and I just can access all the shortcuts like that. And I can zoom in anywhere I want. And also notice that I am just hovering over my canvas and the way that is achieved is very simple. I just press down space and whenever you press down space Whatever tool you have selected, it will just switch to the hand tool. Now the hand tool is basically for you to move around and you just left click on your mouse and just drag the canvas around. So it's a very easy way to move around and navigate on your canvas. So I just press control and then I just zoom out or in, release the control and move the things around. So now you know how to navigate through Photoshop really fast. And trust me, it might uh, be a little bit weird at first, but once you get used to it, it's like the fastest workflow you can have on Photoshop. So what I'm doing here is basically brushing areas with my brush tool. Now make sure that your brush is soft and round. So the hardness is set to zero and size is relative to your photograph. I want to teach you another trick that I use all the time. So whenever I have a brush selected, notice that I can easily change its size. Now I can even change the hardness of it. So notice its hardness is 100 right now and it goes down to zero. So that becomes a soft brush. And the way I do that is again without moving my hand, I basically press down Alt or Option key and then right click with my mouse. All right. So make sure you have your brush tool selected. Alt or Option and then right click. Then this little circle will pop up and you can move your mouse left to right. So the left will make it smaller and the right will make it bigger. Then if you go up with your mouse, the brush will become softer. And if you go down with your mouse, the brush will become harder. So it will have like this hard edges, whereas this one will be like soft. All right, so work on that a little bit just to get used to it. And trust me, it's going to help your workflow really, really well. You're going to start working in Photoshop so much quicker than you did before, because I see like some Photoshop tutorials just tell uh, viewers that, you know, just press the bracket keys or whatever to change your mouse size. But then 
that loses so much time because you have to take your hand off your mouse. And I think the most important thing is just to keep your hands still and do everything from one place. Aside from that, the brackets only give you so much, right? So as you can see, it makes huge jumps, right? Whereas with this method, you can increase or decrease the diameter by a single pixel easily, right? works on large scale as well as well as small one as you can see you can, you can even go down to one pixel so it's really cool and i highly recommend that you start using this method now let's get back to our photograph so as you can see this uh, blue skin kind of looks unnatural it's fine at the moment we should just be coloring the skin so it's good that we see where it's coloring and in a few moments we will just adjust the layers so that the skin color will look natural so i'm just gonna go over the edges here now the good thing about this method of coloring is that let's say if i go over a little bit i can just press x on my keyboard it will swap the color between white and black and what black does is basically it erases or hides the color all right so as you can see with my black color i can just hide it just to demonstrate here. And then with my white color, it fills it up. So wherever I put my white color, it will color it. And that's why it's good. So again, the whole process is happening without me moving my hands. And that's what you wanna go for. Just keep your hands still and reach out to the shortcuts that you need in your working process. Uh, so I'm just carefully coloring out the areas here and trying not to touch up the hair too much but even if we do no worries if i go over the hair i can get back to my black color increase my brush size and then carefully coloring out just by clicking like that just slowly removes the color all right i'm gonna zoom out and see how this is going we have still a little bit more work to do here on the edges uh, so I'm going to reduce the size of my brush and go over the edges here. Now, notice that if you use a big brush and you try to do that, it will generate extra soft glow on the edge. So that's why I usually prefer to use smaller brush when I'm working on the edges. I'll do the same here. And if I go over, I definitely don't want to have a glowing effect on her. So I'm just going to go over and erase it with my black color selected. Swap back to white. Color these areas of skin and remove the areas where there is no skin. So far so good. Let's go over these beads here. So the pearls are definitely reflecting some color obviously but you don't wanna go over there too much. You don't wanna color them too much. So I would suggest coloring any items that can reflect light with a very soft brush. So another thing you can do is reduce the opacity of your brush very easily by pressing down your numbers on your keyboard. So notice here that we have a 100% opacity. So that means that whenever I press down my brush is gonna paint in 100%. Now, if you press down one on your keyboard, the opacity is gonna go down to 10%. So notice the difference here, it's almost invisible. So that is going to be very helpful if you wanna color something in a very mild way. The numbers on opacity work exactly the way you think they do. If you press five, it's gonna be 50%. 8 it's going to be 80 and so on but it, what if you want to do 25 no problem you just press 2 and 5 very quickly so 2 and 5 you'll get opacity 25 here if you want to go back to 100 percent you just click 0 and that's going to go back to 100 percent so that's very helpful again without moving your hand you're able to access the opacity of your brush now i'm going to go back to my soft brush here and color her face and I'm going to go over the mouth, but then I'm going to re remove that color once I'm done with the whole face. So I'm going to just slightly color in her eyebrows as well and reduce my brush size. I'll go over her ear as well. And just make sure it doesn't touch her hair. So not too much. Okay, and once I'm done with her face, 
I'll go over the lips and remove the color. Or I mean, you can leave that color be as well, no problem. But I think it's going to look a little bit more realistic if we will remove the color and expose her lips. So that way it looks a bit more like she's wearing makeup. And it's okay if the color goes over her lips. That's what usually happens with makeup as well. So I think we've uh, gone through the coloring phase, except maybe a little skin showing under her hair. So this is where I'm going to use my opacity trick. I'm going to go ahead and press one on my keyboard. So put opacity to 10% and just gently color this area here that is under her hair, the showing of skin, uh, so that it doesn't show up on the hair too much. So that looks a little bit more realistic. Now it's the time where we can actually make the color look a bit more realistic. Uh, there are two ways you can do. The easiest one is just to reduce the opacity of the layer. So I'm just going to go here and just reduce the opacity. And as you can see, uh, this is pretty much what it would look like if somebody did actually paint uh, skin with, uh, with some makeup. But there's also another way. So I'm going to go back to 100 opacity on this layer. I'm going to go to my adjustments layer select hue saturation and then hold alt or option and move my mouse between these two layers and that's going to create a clipping mask so whatever i do here will only affect the layer below it meaning the color layer so if i change the color only the skin will be affected or rather only the area we have selected previously so here you can easily change the color. Let's make it a little bit more blue. I think it fits her better. And then I'm going to reduce the saturation until it looks like a natural skin color. Okay, I think that's great. And yeah, that's how you change skin color. Now you can go back to this layer and make small adjustments to make it look even better. For the sake of the tutorial, I'm not going to do that, but you're welcome to do so. Now, you might be wondering, does this method work on any skin color? And the answer is yes. So I've just placed a image of this guy here. And we're going to try and go through the similar method here. But this time just really quickly. So I'm just going to go ahead and select a solid color here. Select a red color this time and change the blending mode to color. As you can see, the skin color has already changed. In fact, I'm going to go through the same process of selecting the rectangle here, selecting my black foreground color, alt or option backspace, and then painting with my white color selected, painting his face only. Let me just do this quickly so I don't waste so much of your time. But yes, the method works on any skin color. Once I have this selection, I'm going to go here, go to hue saturation, alt or option, hover the mouse between these two layers, click, and then reduce the saturation down to about 55. And yeah, as you can see, it does work. And I can go back and change my color from here. And yeah, let me just show you real quick how these two layers worked. So that was before and after. And for this guy, before and after and obviously this, the second sample hasn't been worked on so much so it doesn't look great but you get the point so thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new if you did please leave a like it really helps the channel to grow subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content like this and leave a comment if you have something specific on your mind thanks again so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one